Hello everybody, it is me, a drama day. I am back again. Yes, another video in relatively quick succession. Miracles do happen. So, we're going to carry on with uh, something a little bit different. Uh, last video we did Rampur from India. And today we are going to move uh, around the world a little bit and we're going to go and visit Japan. And we are going to look at Kamiki, uh, which is a Japanese blended malt. Um, so this particular sample, it took me a while to remember. I've had this a long time uh, and it took me a while to remember where I actually got this. Um, it's my handwriting on the label, so I was trying to think, where did I get this from? Uh, it's actually from uh, one of the nicest people in the UK drinks industry, a gentleman called Tim Dunlop. Uh, he works at the moment, at the time of recording, for a drinks company called Mangrove, Mangrove Drinks. He is lovely, one of the nicest guys ever, uh, and I would like to thank him for the sample that I got from him. I can't remember when. Anyway, um, as the videos uh, moving forward will do, let's take a look at uh, Kamiki, the distillery stroke the brand itself. Kamiki blended malt whiskey is produced and distributed by Yoshino Spirits, based in the city of Nara, 20 miles east of Osaka. Based at the foot of Mount Miwa, Kami means God and Iki means breath, resulting in Kamiki, or God's breath, named after the winds that descend from the mountain. The production of Kamiki is a bit of a mystery, due to the lack of information available online and the relatively lax regulations within Japanese whisky production. It's a blend of Japanese single malts with malts from around the world, predominantly scotch, before being cut to 48% with local Japanese water. The blend constitution is unknown, but it's not uncommon for whiskies labelled as Japanese to actually contain whiskies from other countries around the world. Basically, you can get your spirit from wherever you want, and if you bottle in Japan, you can then call it Japanese. And with the demand for Japanese whiskies being so high, well why wouldn't you? What does make Kamiki so distinct is that it's finished for an undisclosed time in Yoshino Sugi, also known as Japanese cedarwood. Traditionally, oak is the wood of choice for maturation and finishing, thanks to its ability to impart flavours and colour over a long period of time, so it's very rare to see any other wood used during the process of maturation. So, let's get on to trying the dram. So here we go. Uh, so this is committee. Committee. Not a committee. Kamiki. This is what the bottle looks like. I think it's quite an attractive looking bottle. I'm going to try and pour me dram. It's about half of this. I don't actually have a measure on me, so I'm going to go with about that. Um, it's a no edge statement, as we've already seen uh, in the blurb, um, and we don't actually know what the constituent parts. We just know that it is uh, Japanese single malts blended with uh, single malt whiskies from around the world, but mainly Scotland. Um, you are looking at uh, 59.99 at Master of Malt, uh, or if you're anywhere near House of Malt, uh, which do online, but are also based in Carlisle, uh, they are selling it for 56.99. So let me get my let me get my tablecloth out so we can have a look at the colour. Da, 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 da. And decent colour, nice kind of orangey hue on that. Um, not quite as dark as the rampour that uh, we did on the last video that I actually had about ten minutes ago. Um, but almost a oh dare I say it's even kind of like an iron brew colour. Uh, and if you don't want, don't know what Iron Brew is, then you are sorely missing out. So, I'm quite looking forward to this because uh, I like anything that's unusual, anything that's a little bit quirky, and the use of Japanese cedar wood to uh, to use in finishing um, really, really intrigues me. So let's take a sniff. Ooh, and it is unusual. Straight away, there is clear evidence of that cedar wood being used. There's a real sweet almost floral wood um, my first instinct is to say pine and obviously pine hasn't been used in this but pine and cedar the smells of pine and cedar are arguably not massively dissimilar there is a strange kind of floral element to both woods and this is really distinctive this is unlike any other whiskey I've ever nosed I like it, it's fruity, it's soft, it's sweet, it's delicate, it's very Japanese. Um, it's, a, it's a nose that I actually would associate with Japanese whiskies in general and kind of almost Japanese culture. Um, there is a delicacy to it but there is a class and I think I've kind of 
gone on um, similar lines when I've done other really really good Japanese whiskies. There is a, um, a there's a delicate complexity, um, which si almost seems like an oxy uh, oxymoron, but there is this lovely balance of flavours which are soft and subtle but really intense and still really really like mouth watering and interesting and just almost impossible to describe. I think some people might find this a bit too piney. It is a very, very unusual nose, so much so that I think some people are gonna nose it and go, oh, I'm not a fan of this. Personally, I really, really like this. Now this is bottled at 48%, so it's pretty strong. There are actually a couple of places I saw online where they said it's bottled at cast strength. This is not cast strength. They are cutting it down with local water to 48%, but it's a stronger ABV than, than normal, like 43, 46. A lot of kind of brands would bottle at 43 or 46. So there's a little bit of an extra punch of ABV in there. Wow. You definitely get that little extra kick, that 48% little extra bit of alcohol really gives it an extra edge it's there it's not too overpowering i think if they went to 50 it would probably dominate too much but that floral piney cedar woodiness that's on the nose really comes through on the palate there's a bit of honey there's red fruits kind of like plums nectarines apricots as well um, kind of like plum skins and it's that weird wood that isn't oak so we're talking pine cedar wood sandalwood it's really chewy it's so distinctive it keeps on going I've only taken one sip of this and that floral wood element is still there really quite it becomes perfumey almost and again as with the nose I think some people are gonna be put off by this because this flavor that I've got, which is almost turning into Palmer Violets, I'm not a big fan of Palmer Violets. This is just the right side of Palmer Violets that I'm still enjoying this. But if you don't like Palmer Violets, it starts to get to that kind of Palmer Violet, lavender, floral, but quite dominant floral flavor. There's a, it's actually evolving, it's kind of changing the longer it's in my mouth. And if it's a flavor that you don't like, you're not gonna like it because it keeps on going. The finish is incredible, it goes on for ages. But it's so unusual, it's so distinctive. This, honestly, is unlike most of the whiskies I've ever had, in a good way. It also tastes like, if you've had spearmint chewing gum so not peppermint not regular chewing gum not an extra or release but spearmint wrigglies when you've chewed it for a long time and then you spit it out but you still get that underlying weird kind of florally spearmint flavor still in your mouth and it sort of lingers around for a bit even though you're not chewing the gum it's that type of flavor that is still staying there now to be honest there's not much else apart from this dominating floral wood element. I really want to say oak because it's a whiskey, but there's no oak element to this. Now, there will be because this has been finished in cedar wood rather than mat mature, matured, matured fully in cedar wood. So it will have been matured in oak cast. The, the constituent parts of the blended malt, the single malts that were used, would have been matured, I'm sure, in oak before being married in cedar wood. But the cedar wood is overpowering everything else. There's no kind of oakiness that's kicking through. It really is a floral, I, I keep saying floral wood because that's really the best way I can describe it. It's so distinctive, it's so unusual. I really like it for its unusual nature. Having said that, I'm not sure I could drink much more than a glass of this because that flavor, that aftertaste, that perfumey, palmer violet, lavendery type thing is borderline for me now. And the more I'm tasting it, the more I'm thinking, starting to enjoy this less because of that flavor. Now, if you do like palmer violets, honest to God, you're gonna love this. Re you really are, because that is 
definitely a key overriding flavor in this. There's not much else. The fruitiness that's there, I'm kind of getting, as well as the, the plums, the nectarines, the apricots, which is, is starting to be tempered now. There is almost um, gooseberry, not really citrus, but there's a zingy gooseberry feel to it as well. Very, very unusual. Not to everybody's taste. Excuse me, I shouldn't have done that. That's very rude of me. What I would say is that if you can try this first before you uh, buy a bottle, I would recommend it. Because I think there are going to be some people out there that are going to buy a bottle for 50 quid because it's a Japanese whiskey and they're going to try it and then go, oh God, that's absolutely awful. Whereas there are going to be other people that will try it and happily spend more than 50 quid on it that are going to absolutely love it. It is one of those whiskies that it's a Japanese whiskey, so it will pretty much sell on its own because it's a Japanese whiskey. But there are people that are going to try this, it's being their very first Japanese whiskey. And the assumption is, as with Isla, if a Lafroig 10 year old is the first Isla that you've ever had, you assume that all Isla tastes exactly the same. And if you hate that type of flavor profile, you think all Isla tastes the same. There'll be people that will have had their first Japanese whiskey being Kamiki, and they will think that all Japanese whiskey tastes like this. And they'll think, God, Japanese whiskey is so weird. Rampo, which I've just done, I would put on a blind tasting and I would think that people wouldn't think it's Indian, but would enjoy it. The vast majority of the people in the room would probably enjoy it. This, this is divisive. I would put this on a, uh, uh, on a blind tasting, knowing that there are gonna be some people in the room that are gonna absolutely loathe this, that are really, really not gonna get on with it because it is such a distinctive, unusual, quite powerful flavor profile that if you don't like it, you're really not gonna like it. I do, for what it gives me, in terms of being something different, something unusual, but I'm not sure I could drink a lot of it. Not that I drink a lot anyway, but it's a type of flavor that I'm working with, but it's very, very close to being a flavor profile that I'm not agreeing with because it's just not for me. However, if that type of flavor, and I'll say it again, Palmer Violets, Lavender, if you like Palmer Violet Sweets, I really do think you're gonna absolutely love this. Very, very interesting. Tim, if you're watching this, thank you very much for the sample way back when when we I finally got it from you. But um, it's worth checking out. If you're looking for something different, if you're looking for something to share with people uh, and give them a whiskey that is unlike anything else they would have tried before, then definitely pick a bottle of this up. So that is number 375 done, and I shall see you at the next one. Cheers.